Come on in. Let's have some Bible study tonight. Come on in. Come on in and join us tonight. It's about that time we do it every week. About that time. We're actually uh, just a minute or two behind. Uh, but come on in. It's about that time. Uh, you all forgive me. I'm having a whole lot of fun building stuff in the house and I'm losing track of time. So uh, we kind of getting some stuff done, maneuvering some stuff around. And so we are just two, three minutes late, but we're here. And uh, and so we want you to come on. I want you to come on in and hang with us. Uh, come on in and hang with us. It's time for Bible study this week. Uh, I want you to kind of grab your Bibles real quickly because we're just about 10 minutes behind. And, uh, and so we want to make sure uh, that we get our time in. I know you've got some stuff to do tonight, uh, but I want you to take a look at uh, Psalm, well, yeah, Psalm 46, Psalm 46 this week. Come on, jump in, Psalm 46 this week. I'm praying that you all are having a great week thus far. Uh, I'm praying that you are having a great week thus far. It's a terrific Tuesday. And, uh, and the Lord has already been good this week. And, uh, and I'm praying that tonight uh, does uh, even more and even better for us. Chris, how you doing, man? Good to see you sharing with us. Uh, grab these Bibles, Psalm 46. I think we got a good lesson this week. Uh, I'm praying as always that God takes my little bit and make it a lot of it. And so we're going to try to make this thing work. Psalm 46. Uh, we're going to try to get through uh, as much of it as we can. I want to talk about um, this week, what to do when the lights go out. I want to talk about it this week, what to do when the lights go out. And uh, and I want I want you all to catch this. I'm praying that this blesses you this week. Um, Psalm 46, those who uh, got a Bible and want to share with us. Um, this particular passage is powerful. And uh, I hope that it it gives us some encouragement uh, on how to handle when the lights go out. Um, if you have if you have been through uh, any type of power outage, if you have been through uh, any type of storm and have lost electricity, uh, typically uh, our first uh, instinct is to panic. And uh, I want to share with us a couple of tidbits. Uh, throughout this number of psalms that I pray uh, will encourage us. Uh, and so I want to talk about it when the lights go out. I want to talk about when the lights go out. And so uh, watch this. This particular psalm background is found uh, Isaiah 36, 37 uh, for this particular psalm. And um, this psalm paints the picture uh, not just from a personal perspective, uh, but for the people uh, of God as well, and we don't really deal with uh, how how we have to stop uh, maneuvering so much from a personal uh, and even sometimes a selfish uh, mind state and motive of prayer uh, to where we begin to look at things from a more corporate uh, perspective and how when we come together, we can get more done, all right? And so uh, let's pray, and then we're going to jump into this uh, and see what the Lord has to say. God, again, we thank you for this time, this chance this week of sharing together. God, we pray that your word shall help us tonight, uh, shall encourage us and even shall heal some tonight. Help us, God, to see you, hear you, and feel your presence. God, we're praying for all of those who are tuning in. We're praying for all of those uh, who are coming seeking you, God, tonight, uh, that we may find some help and uh, some direction on how to handle life's uh, challenges. And so we ask God now, for your mercy divine and for your power from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So watch this. Uh, uh, this this is a peculiar passage. Uh, history tells us it was written around the time, uh, or during, I should say, Hezekiah's reign. And um, th this was a tough spot uh, because uh, uh, they were struggling uh, they they were dealing with uh, some some battles. Uh, they were dealing with some enemies, um, and and this particular passage shows us that even when it seems as though 
um, all of the issues, circumstances that are surrounding you, even when it seems as though they're bigger than you, they're greater than you, uh, that you can indeed still handle it. And so I want to I want to jump into this. Uh, this text says in verse one, uh, it starts off by identifying uh, the relationship between the people uh, and with God. And so it starts off, it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help. Uh, in trouble. And so I want you to catch this real quickly because uh, some of the people that struggle uh, dealing with life's issues and ills, uh, one of the main reasons that they struggle is because they don't identify who God is to them. Uh, and don't get me wrong because God is not just one thing to all people, uh, but God is many things to many people. Uh, matter of fact, if we're honest enough, God is, is quite a bit to just you, depending on what it is you're going through. And so this particular passage is powerful. Matter of fact, it's it's believed uh, that this is Hezekiah's writing uh, unto God. And, that, and he has had some conversation uh, with Isaiah in regards to uh, uh, the king and, and, and just their enemies, their issues. And and watch this, Hezekiah is powerful as he introduces this. Hezekiah identifies God first uh, as refuge and strength. And so uh, the first thing I want to tell you that when the lights go out, the first thing you ought to do is find your shelter. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand. I made the analogy earlier that when the power goes out sometime in our homes, uh, we, we're already in what we would consider a safe space or a safe place. Uh, but in actuality, even in the midst of your home, there are some places that are more comfortable than others. There are some places that you feel more secure, that you feel more safe, even in your home uh, than others. And so watch this. Uh, the, the psalmist says uh, that we have to go to our shelter. And I need you to catch this uh, because he identifies God both as shelter and of strength. And so he says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And so he, he identifies the shelter. The shelter is a fortress. It is a place uh, of protection. Uh, it is, uh, as one psalmist calls it, a sweet hiding place. And so uh, the writer is trying to, to remind us uh, that when it seems like things are dark, when it seems as though uh, we're, we're overwhelmed with what we're dealing with, uh, that, that we can always find shelter uh, in God. And so uh, he identifies God as a shelter or a fortress translated text. And, and if you know anything regarding a fortress, uh, a fortress was indeed a, a, a high wall uh, that was built around the different kingdoms. And this particular fortress served indeed as protection from the enemies who may be uh, encamped around uh, the kingdom. And so uh, the writer identifies God being uh, the fortress around us, identifying God being a high wall, translated text here, as being a high wall, a fortress, a place of uh, protection. And watch this, when, when our issues arise, uh, when we try to handle them uh, without having our hand in God's hand, we essentially come from behind our protective covering and we leave ourselves vulnerable to more attacks from the enemy. Uh, it's like that old song we used to sing in the church, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. Why would you ask God to be a fence? Why would you ask God to be your shelter? Why would you ask God to provide protection if you're only going to circumvent the protection that he gives you? If you're only going to go around, if you're only going to go out the door after he's telling you to stay behind the door. And so you, you, you cannot, and matter of fact, you should not, ask for God's protection and then turn around and walk from around the protection. That's almost like going out into a football field uh, to participate in the game and you out there with no pads on. Everybody else got pads on. Everybody else has a helmet on. You know, everybody else got a uniform on and you just out there running around in shorts and the tank top. 
uh, how do you think you're going to survive any type of hit? How do you think you're going to survive any type of contact? Uh, why, when you have a, a shelter, when you have help, when you have uh, uh, some help in this, why would you put yourself in a position to where you're coming from around the protection and trying to handle it yourself? The moment that you disregard God's protective covering and attempt to handle it on your own, it's almost as though you're telling God, I don't need your help. I, I don't need you. I don't, I don't need you to handle it. I don't need you to do it. I don't need you to cover me. I can handle it by myself. Watch this. The writer identifies God as refuge and strength because he knows that he cannot handle the enemy by himself. He knows he cannot handle the attacks of the enemy by himself. And so watch this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This is powerful because the writer identifies uh, that trouble is there, that trouble is persistent, trouble shall come, trouble shall rise. But watch it. If God is our protection, if he's our refuge and our strength and he's present, then the trouble really don't matter because we already have somebody who's able to handle whatever it is we're about to encounter. Watch it. He says in verse number two, because God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble, therefore we will not fear. Watch this now. One of the second things that typically happens when the lights go out is uh, we find ourselves fearful. Listen, we, we struggle uh, because we can't see where we're going. We have trouble identifying what's in front of us. So we become afraid to take the necessary steps to continue uh, to go forward. But I've said it before many a time, you cannot be faithful and fearful at the same time. Faith and fear cannot reside in the same edifice. And so because faith and fear cannot reside in the same place, you have to make the decision to choose faith over fear. Can I tell you how to handle it? Put fear on the back burner and put your faith in an almighty God. He says, we will not fear. This is powerful, my brothers and sisters, because when you can't see where you're going, oftentimes you won't go anywhere. Uh, but how can you move forward if you refuse to have any type of movement, if you're afraid to take any type of step? Uh, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't have to see it to know it's there. I tell you, like an old preacher told me, faith is when you're trusting God when you ain't when you can't trace God, which means you don't see God, but you know he's there. You you don't I, you you can't reach him, you can't touch him, but you believe that he's moving and operating outside of your vision, outside of your eyesight. And so the writer says, although we're going through it, we have strength, we have refuge, we have help in the midst of the trouble. And watch this, because we have it, we have no reason to fear. That, that's like saying, I got the secret weapon, uh, but I'm not going to use the weapon. I'm going to allow myself to sit here and be afraid to go through and to handle and to deal, although we have help already on our side. You know how crazy that sound? One minute you talking about you love the Lord. He heard my cry, pity my every groan. Long as I live, while trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. You want to tell everybody how much you love the Lord, how much the Lord has proven himself to you. But as soon as something happens, the first thing that you do is become afraid. How does that happen? How do you manage to be faithful and fearful at the same time. I need to know what do you expect to accomplish if you if you're trying to be faithful but you're operating in fear. The two don't go together. You have to make the decision to move and to operate in faith. You ought to tell yourself in faith. You have to have faith to move. You have to have faith to make it. You have to have faith to go forward. And a lot of us are struggling because we simply refuse to activate our faith. Watch this. These, these particular verses uh, get pretty good. Uh, the latter part of verse two, it says, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters rose and be troubling, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Watch this. This is powerful because 
uh, uh, th these things are not personal things that happen. These things are talking about what happens around us. Catch this now, beloved of God. There are a whole lot of things that happen that you cannot control. I need you to catch this. You have no control whether or not the earth be begins to disintegrate. You have no control over the mountains, whether they go through and fall into the midst of the sea, the, mount the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains swell uh, and, and shake with the swelling. You got to catch this thing. Uh, you have no control uh, over the elements. God controls the elements. Your job is to maintain faith even when it seems like things are falling apart around you. I need you to catch it. I need you to catch this uh, because some of us are only faithful when it seems as though we are controlling the narrative. You do know you're not operating in faith when you're in control. When you have the say so, that is not identifying your faith. Your faith is truly shown when you cannot control the outcome. Let me help it make sense to you. Watch this. When you go to the doctor and bad news comes, bad diagnosis comes. And it's something that you cannot control whether you're going to be helped or healed from, then that's when your faith comes in. Now, I'm not talking about whether you choose to get up and go, whether you choose to eat healthy or not, whether you choose to do the right thing or not. I'm talking about when life happens and you have no control. The reason why these descriptions are so massive is because it's beyond human comprehension. Check this out. What happens if the earth be removed? We're residents on the earth. If the earth be removed and the, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, can you imagine if by chance, can you imagine the mountains falling into the sea? I'm reminded of that old song, Stand By Me. Benny King was saying stuff like that. If the mountains shall crumble by the sea, you do know Benny was talking about this song. We'll talk about that later. But when it says the mountains shall crumble by the sea, when the earth shall begin to fall and collapse on itself, catch this. Yes. Where will your faith be, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling? Your faith has to be intact. You will not fear if you know who's holding the mountains. Can I make this make sense to you real quickly? You do know that God may have to crumble a mountain to give you a pathway. <laughs> You you do understand the waves have to come in your life to push you along the right path because the way that you were sailing, you was going to end up somewhere that you wasn't supposed to be. So sometimes the troubling waves have to come to push you back on track. And so you have to believe, although it seemed like it don't make sense, you have to trust God through it. So you got to find it. Watch it. But verse four says there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Help us in here. What are you saying, songwriter? There will be a path, even when it seems like it's going wrong, God has a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. That literally means that even when it seems like what's going on, no matter what happens, God has a way of putting us on the right track. I need you to catch it. This is Bob. It says, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high. I need you to catch this. Uh, th th this this psalm uh, is, is a bit synonymous uh, with, with Psalm uh, Psalm 122 up, up to 134. These are kind of synonymous uh, with those, those passing songs, the hill songs that they traveled and they sang as they traveled uh, because they were looking at, check this out, beloved of God, they were looking at the path way that would lead them back unto the most, uh, the, to the tabernacle in the city of the most high. I need you to catch it. And, and so this psalm writer was saying, although it seems as though things are falling apart, uh, things are breaking apart, things are not making sense, God has a way of, 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 of creating a stream in the midst of this, watch this, that shall lead you back unto God. I need you to catch it. This is good teaching. I need you to catch it. Even when it seems as though it's not making sense, God has a way that, had, that God has a way of leading you back to where he wants you to be. It says the holy place of 
the tabernacle of the Most High. Anybody know about the holy place? The holy place was not just the tabernacle. The holy place was inside of the tabernacle. It is the sanctuary of the tabernacle. Matter of fact, to be more specific, it is behind the veil in what's known as the holy of holies, which is a place that only the high priest can go as he went to make prayers uh, and offer sacrifices on behalf of the sins uh, of those who came and admitted that they made mistakes. And so watch this. There is a stream that leads us back unto the most sacred place of the tabernacle. Can I tell you, uh, you do know whether or not you believe it, although sin separates us uh, from God, it also has a way of sending us back to God. Take a moment to think about this because all of us have been so sinful that it seemed as though God had looked away from us. God had left us by ourselves and we were trying to navigate through life by ourselves. But watch it. It happened to me. Pretty sure it happened to you. You found yourself in a place to where the only thing you could do was cry out to God. The only thing you could do is draw unto God. The only thing you could do is remember the words of mama and grandmama and daddy and them, and the old songs that we sang in the sanctuary, the old scriptures and Sunday school lessons. The, the, the Life has a way of bringing us at times full circle back unto the presence of God. I love this. This because it says when you get into this holy place of the most high, it says God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Oh, I needed to touch on this real quickly because I've seen a lot of young women uh, who have used this particular verse uh, and they use it uh, as a means of saying that you can't break me. You can't shake me. Uh, God is walking with her and she will not be moved. Let me help you with this. Uh, it, th this particular verse is talking about the church itself. I need you to catch it. You got to remember that this is the children of Israel's prayer, that this is the writing concerning the children of Israel. This is not saying uh, that women are wrong in using this, but make sure if you're going to use it, use it in the right context. This prayer, this particular part of it was meant for the church. That's why it says her and she, because the church is the bride of Christ. Woo, you missed your shot right there. It says God is in the midst of her and she shall not not be moved. That means that all of us uh, uh, who call ourselves Christian, uh, th those who identify ourselves as followers and believers of Christ are a part of the bride of Christ, which is the church. God is in the midst and shall not be moved. You missed your shout. You do know when you have God in the midst of what you're trying to do, that you cannot be moved. Catch this. Go up a couple verses. Watch this. It says, we will not fear in verse three, even though the earth be removed, even though the mountains be carried into the sea, the waters roar and be troubled. The mountains shake with its swelling. The river shall lead us back to the city of God, the most high of the tabernacle of the most high. Watch this what it says. But God is with her and she shall not be, moved. which means although everything around you might be crumbling when you hold fast to God. Guess what, beloved God? He will hold fast to you. That's why I said that God is in the midst and she shall not be moved. God, It says God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Remember, I told you the title was this thing, what to do when the lights go out. You do know even when the power goes out, it can be uh, hours long and it seemed like ain't nothing going to change. It seems like it's dark and it's dismal and you can't see which way you're going to go. Watch this. It says God shall help, help her just at the break of dawn. Uh, I like to say this in there so you can understand what I'm saying. You do know of uh, the darkest hours right before daybreak. But when day breaks, the sun shall shine again. And so watch it. You may go through, but God is going is not going to allow you to go through by your self. I need you to catch this. It says he shall help. It says he shall help just at the break of dawn. I need you to catch this because this break of dawn is a real deep piece. It's not just talking about night unto day. It's talking about the, the, the moment right between breakdown and breakthrough. 
Woo, I almost lost it right there. I need you to catch this, beloved of God, because somebody here is at the point of breakdown, not realizing that you two seconds away from break through. You trying to give up when God is trying to tell you to hold on. You trying to walk away and God is trying to tell you to keep walking. You trying to give up. God is saying pull up. God is saying get up. God is saying step up. God is saying keep going. He's going to help you just at the break of dawn. God does not intend to break you down. He intends to break you through. Somebody high five yourself right there. God don't want to hurt you. God wants to help you. God don't want to hurt you. God wants to push you forward. Somebody is struggling and, and I need you to catch this. You struggling. You're not by yourself. I guarantee you somebody else watching this is struggling too. I, and I want to encourage those who are watching. I know it seems hard. The job been closed for a few weeks. You know, unemployment ain't really kicked in. These kids is getting on your nerves. These bills ain't going nowhere. Can I tell you what to do? Stop putting it on Facebook. Stop putting it on Instagram. Stop texting folk. Stop calling folk. Stop reaching out to people who are just as messed up as you are and call on God who vows to help right at the break of dawn. Can I tell you the difference between breakdown and breakthrough is separated by your prayers. Breakdown and breakthrough is separated by your petitions. Breakdown and breakthrough is separated by your ability or inability to include God in your mess. Catch it now. It just said God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved, but watch it. You only going to move or not move if you if you choose to keep God in it. He says, I'm going to help you just at the break of dawn. I promise you, I promise you this, if you hold on long enough, my grandmama would say uh, that the Lord will come see about you and everything will be all right. This is powerful because there are so many individuals who don't realize, I ain't going to get through this, is so many people who, who don't realize that, that it's only one thing that's truly separating us from the breakthrough. It's only, it's only one thing that's truly keeping us from walking out of our mess into the majesty of God. It's only one or two things. I, I want to say one thing truly that is keeping us from moving between breakdown and breakthrough. I said it before. I said it again. The moment that you choose to stop complaining and start praying, God can move. The moment that you choose faith over fear, God will move. The moment that you decide you're going to leave the mess where it is and walk in the promises of God, God will move. It says he with her. She shall not be moved. He shall help her just at the break of dawn. The text does not say at the breaking down. It says at the breaking of dawn. The breaking of dawn identifies, signifies, and notifies that a new day is on the horizon. Can I tell you, it's been a long night. The light's been out a long time. You've been struggling and suffering, trying to get through it. But can I tell you, you're right at the moment of breakthrough. The only reason you ain't seen it yet is because you ain't called on God yet. You do know that the new day can come, but if you still sitting there with your eyes closed, you ain't know the sun done rise. The moment that you open your eyes and identify with God that you believe in him, identify with him, that you're trusting in him, that your faith lies within him is the moment that the night seems to go away. Night has no time frame attached to it. Nighttime is a season. It's not a day. It's not a night. It's, it, it's, it is a season, but the season can change the moment that God wills it to. Watch this. It says, it says uh, that he shall help her just at uh, the break of dawn. I got, I got to kind of get through a little bit of this, uh, but, but you got to go to your shelter and, and then you have to go unto him. You have to admit unto him that, that you need him and watch it. It says that the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is 
our refuge. This is powerful uh, because the verse before it talks about the nations raging and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. Y'all see this in the text. You do know that God has enough power to speak and life comes, but he also has power to speak and things dissolve. This, this, this is strong because we, we don't realize uh, uh, that while we're dealing, God is dealing outside of what we can see. And God can speak some things uh, around us and, and those things won't hurt us, but it will hinder the enemy around us. Watch it. It says the Lord God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our uh, refuge, that, that word refuge, again, we've seen it in verse number one and it pops up again. Let me just remind you uh, real quickly that this refuge is powerful because it again identifies the protective covering that God provides for us. Now you've seen in these verses all of the things that have happened around us. We, we've seen the, the mountains crumbling to the sea. We've seen the rage, the, the uh, rivers roaring. We've seen the mountains shaking and swelling, but watch it. It's says, we will not fear, although the earth be removed. It, it goes on to say, although these things are happening, it says that God has a way of keeping calm what seems to be falling apart around us. He has a way of keeping us calm in the midst of the chaos around us. This is powerful. I'm not going to make it through it. I'm trying. I'm not going to make it through it. But watch it. He says, the Lord God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Not only is his presence identified by being with us, but it further is solidified by him providing once again our refuge. Remember, we talked about this word refuge. This refuge means he provides shelter for us. He provides comfort for us. He, he provides protection from the enemies around us. This is powerful. He, he, this good thing goes on to say, come behold the works of the Lord. Verse number eight, come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. Watch it. He makes wars cease to the ends Oh, Lord of the earth. This is powerful because in the midst of this particular prayer, uh, it says Jerusalem was under attack. The Assyrian army was trying their best uh, to get them and watch it. While the, the kingdom was under attack, it says Hezekiah indeed turns himself back unto God in prayer. It says, and the, it says God then allows his angel to act on behalf of Israel. It says, and decimates the Assyrian army and all who intervene on their behalf. This is powerful because not too many people understand because we too busy trying to fight it on our own. When we call upon God, we don't have to call upon God and try to fight at the same time. If you're calling on God to be your protection, if you're calling on God to be your deliver if you're calling on God to help you handle it. You can't keep calling on God and then acting on your own regard. The Bible says in this particular passage, it says as they called upon God, God decides to move. Let me make it make sense to you. While you still trying to figure it out, God is already working it out. It says while they're calling on God under attack, it says God is dispatching his angels to handle those who are attacking them. I hope I'm helping you right here because you don't have to fight nobody. Oh Lord, let me say it because I, I got to get this thing out because of some people struggling with this. You getting mad at people, you cussing them out, you trying to fight them, you putting your business out there, you trying to fight people, you calling them out on Facebook, you calling them out on Instagram, you talking about them on Twitter, talking about what you're going to do to them, talking about how mad you are with them. Can I tell you something? The Lord has never fought a battle on the internet. He's never fought a battle on social media. The Lord has a way of maneuvering behind the scenes so you you ain't got to fight nobody. Lord Jesus, stop trying to fight folk. Stop trying to handle it. Stop trying to deal with it. If you're a part of the body of Christ, you ain't got to fight nobody. God has a way of handling the enemy on your behalf. It literally says that when they called upon God, God dispatches the angel to handle the army that was trying to handle them. You do know that if you be still, as that song say, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just be be still. I know it's got a whole lot more in this verses, but I got to get out of here. I need you to catch this. If you jump to verse 10 with me real quickly, look at this. 
be still and know that I am God. I, I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this. You're going to find this in, in Mark 39 as well. Uh, God, God, God is trying to get us to understand that if we sit still long enough in his presence, a uh, uh, leaning on his time, leaning on his wisdom, leaning on his ability to handle. You ain't got to fight it. He will handle it for you. Know that he is God. If you remember verse one, uh, Hezekiah started saying stuff like God is our refuge and strength, very present help in the time of trouble. He's letting you know this is this is God's response in verse 10. God, God says in verse 10, be still. And God will fight your battles. Be still. Know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Now, that's the reason uh, that, that, that is worded this way. And I tell people to pay attention to the lyrics, pay attention to the verse. If you notice, uh, it does not say be still and guess that I'm God. Be still and wonder if I'm God. It says be still and know that I'm God. Can I tell you one of the reasons we not sure if we're going to make it is because we're not sure how much we believe in God just yet. We have not made up our mind uh, how much we're going to trust God just yet. We ain't really figured it out how much of our problems we're going to give over to God because we don't really know how much faith we got today. But can I tell you, if you sit still long enough and allow God to work, he will show you some stuff. If you allow him to be God, he will be God. Be still and know that I am God, can I tell you something? Um, God, God, God ain't your boo. God, God ain't your bae. Uh, God, God, God is not your genie. Uh, God, God is there to be God. You have to have some blessed assurance in knowing who God is. Be still and know I am God. Watch God's response. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. God is trying to let us know if you let him handle it, not only will he handle you, but he will also handle everything around you. I, I, this, this, this is one of the reasons I tell people I'm not I'm not political and I'm not about to get real political now. But I got to say this so it makes sense to somebody. Stop arguing with folk on Facebook about Trump. He ain't got no power. Stop, stop trying to get political with folks. Stop trying to mix religion, your belief and politics. Let God handle what he made. If he made us, he can handle us. Oh, I done flipped the camera around. Y'all see all my shoe bikes. I done got so excited. I done flipped the camera around. Watch this. He says, let me handle it. And if you let me handle it, I will not only handle you, but I will handle the enemy around you. He says, I will be exalted above what you're going through. Not only will I be exalted, uh, it says above the nations. He said, but I will be exalted above all the earth. That means there will be nothing that can handle God's presence. There will be nothing that we, we will be promoted above God. Catch this. We got to stop trying to put people in God's place. We got to stop trying to elevate people above God. God says, I will be exalted. And then it ends this thing by saying one more time, the Lord God of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob uh, is our refuge. This thing is powerful because uh, we, we sometimes need the reminder. We need the reminder that, that even when it gets dark, we have shelter. Even, even, even when it gets dark, uh, uh, we, we, we have a system that we can deal with. Uh, and then even when it gets dark, we still have a savior. I need you to catch that one more time because we struggle because it gets dark, not realizing we got shelter. We have a safe place that we can go to. We have a safe haven that we can de depend on. We have somebody that's got us covered and got us protected. When it gets dark, we have a system that we can rely on. What is that system again, Pastor? That system is our prayer and petition to God. Remind him that we need him, giving it over to him, trusting him, relying in him, and allowing our faith to override our fear. God dog it. Last thing is, we have to remind, we have to know this, that even when it get dark, we still have a savior. You know, it don't matter uh, what happens outside of here. Uh, 
because God still holds all of this in his hand. And, and, and even though it seemed dark right now, uh, it, it's going to come. It, the, the, the day is going to come where God shall again restore unto us what he promised us. Psalm 30 and 5 talks about this. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I need somebody to catch this blessed assurance. I wanted to preach it, but I might as well throw this in here. We, we struggle because that text says that weeping may endure for a night. We have to make, we make that choice sometime uh, that, that we're going to cry all night long. But the te that text finishes up by says joy will come in the morning. We have to be reminded that we have shelter, that we have a system. And lastly, that we have a savior and he promises us never to leave us. He promises us never to forsake us. He promised us that he would be with us. Our struggle, beloved of God, is not that God has ever forgotten about us. Our struggle continuously occurs when we forget about him. I, I'm, I'm done tonight. I hope this short lesson helped you. We may be under siege, but we got a savior. We may be under attack, uh, but we got an undefeated ally that, that's got our back. And, and, and if we would just learn to replace that fear with faith, God can and will handle what we're going through. Can I tell you something real quickly? Even in the midst of, of, of the dark time, even when it seemed like the lights are out and you ain't got no help, you, you're going through it. Can, can, I, can I tell you that, that if we truly give it to him, if we truly turn it over to him, if we learn to rely on on him, God will handle it. God, God will deal with it. And then watch this. I, I love it because it's, it's mixed in this text. Uh, God not only will handle the enemy, God will not only handle the attack, but God will also handle us in the midst of it. it it's in the text. If you pay attention, he talks about it. We will not fear. We will not be moved. He's got us covered. God not only handles them and they, but God also handles me and I. And can I tell you, you get more done or more things get done, not when God handles the enemy, but you get more accomplished when God handles you. <laughs> I said I said it on last night. We done for the night. I said it on last night that, that the true breakthrough comes when God handles us in the breakthrough. That's when the breakthrough happens. We struggling because we want God to do something about everything and everybody, but we don't want God to do nothing to us and with us. Can I tell you, change don't occur to other people. Change occurs to you too. Change hits you too. And if you think that it's always everything that needs to be changed and not you, if you only think it's everything that needs to be delivered and not you, then something is wrong with your connection. Because we're taught, we're trained, we see it in the text. There's only one man perfect who walked here. It was the one that was born a virgin, the one who suffered on Calvary, one who died for our sin and got up on Sunday morning. So don't think that the Lord ain't got to deal with you in the midst of it. You have to get to a point to where you give you to him and then watch him handle you. And then he can handle your problems. So what are you doing? What are you doing? The lights go out. You go to your shelter. You remember your system. And then most of all, you remember your savior. Can I tell you, every dark night that I had, had, a, had a, a daybreak come. And in the midst of that daybreak came the breakthrough. Don't allow yourself to miss your breakthrough by focusing on your breakdown. Oof, that hit me. Don't, don't, don't miss your breakthrough by focusing on your breakdown. Can I, can I say this? And, and, and we're and we going to sign off here in a, in a minute or two, but I need to say this. Our breakthrough, our breakthrough, catch this. Our breakthrough is attached to our ability to rely on God in the breakdown. You missed your shout. Our ability to get to the breakthrough all relies on our ability to hold on to God in the breakdown. Don't let what you're dealing with rob you of, of getting to that point of breakthrough. Don't let 
and, and listen, let, let me let me say this because I need I, I need to get this out because somebody needs to hear it just in this manner. Is some is some stuff that is weighing you down. Can we can we talk for real in here? It's it's some vices that are breaking you down. Matter of fact, it's some people who are pulling you down. God dog. I knew what nobody going to say amen right then. Watch this. It's some, it's some things that are breaking you down and, and they're only breaking you down because you keep holding on to them. You keep going back to them. You won't walk away from them. You know, I, I, I tell folk, I struggle with, with, with people who, who won't stop smoking cigarettes and won't stop coughing. <laughs> you, you smoking and you know that the smoke is bothering you. You know that it's impacting your lungs and your ability to breathe but you won't stop smoking. How can you hold on to what's hindering you? My God, it's some stuff that we holding on to. Catch this. It's some, it's some people that we're holding on to. It, it's, you know, it's, it's some folk that, that, that's saved, but they ain't sane. Jesus. It, it's some people that are sane and they ain't saved. God, dog. It, it's some folk right now that, that are living daily in hell because they dealing with folk that's either saved and ain't sane and sane and ain't saved. Let me make it make sense to you. They seem sane because it seems like they got good sense. They seem sane because they can have an intelligent conversation. They seem sane because they can get up and go to work every day. They can come home and provide for you. But watch this. They ain't saved because they don't acknowledge God. They ain't saved because they don't acknowledge you. They, they ain't saved because they're not giving their life to Christ. They, they, are you catching what I'm saying? You can't hold on to folk who refuse to not hold on to God. Good night, church. I got to go. You, can, you, you can't keep holding on to folk who, who saved and ain't sane. Let me make, make it sense now. Because there's some people who know God, but they choose not to utilize God. They choose not to acknowledge God. It's people who know God. They've seen him work. They know how powerful he is, but they still choose to operate within their own volition. That means they choose to put themselves over God. That means that they saved and they ain't sane. I need you to catch this. You a fool. You get mad at me if you want to. You you a fool if, if you continue to hold on to somebody who don't want to hold on to you. My granddaddy, the late great uh, Reverend Robert Dan Turnage, told me in 2002, we were having a conversation at my mama's house. He said, only a fool would keep chasing what don't want to be caught. Good night, church. It's it, only a fool would put all their effort and energy into following behind somebody who don't want to be caught chasing behind something, pursuing something that has no intention of slowing down long enough for you to obtain them. And, and so and so I'm telling you this, uh, I, I, I'm telling you this because I, I hope this blesses you. Uh, you. You need to go back and operate in your shelter system and savior and stop putting your, all of your trust, all of your faith in man. Lord Jesus, can we be honest in here? We, we being honest in here because, because it's dark in our life and because it's dark in our life, we keep searching for the familiar, not operating in the faith. We're going to call the person we know going to answer. We're going to text the person who we know going to come get us. We're going to communicate with the person who we know going to come save us and pull us out of our dark time. But can I tell you, what good is it to leave the dark to get into a car with a person who blind? You, you, you just as bad off. You done, you done got in the car with somebody who can't even see where they're going. Remember your shelter. Remember the system. Remember your savior. Let go of what is holding you. Walk away from what is hindering you. Shake off what the devil is trying to continuously throw on you. We, we need to get to this point. To, to where we stop breaking down so much, so easy. I mean, I, I promise we got to get out of here. But 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 listen, you have to know you stronger than what you're dealing with. You're stronger than what's trying to get you. You're stronger than, than, that, than that individual who's trying to hurt you and harm you and hinder you. You're stronger than that. The way you show it is how you handle them. Stop giving them all your time. Stop giving them all your attention. They don't want you. They proved it to you. God bless you. They done proved it to you. They don't want you. They don't want to be bothered with you. They don't want to deal with you. Well, guess what? Stop giving them what they don't deserve. Stop giving them what you don't owe them. 
That old song say, got to know when to hold them. Got to know when to fold them. Can I remind us? Although it may seem dark, although it may seem like we just can't see what's in front of us, find our shelter. Remember that system. Activate your faith. Lean closer to God. Depend on him. Put your faith in him. And then remember the Savior. If the, if the Savior can handle dark times, so can you. I just believe it was no darker time ever in the history of mankind uh, than that time that Christ hung on the cross, that he was taken down off the cross, that he was buried in a tomb. There was no darker time ever in, in the history of mankind. But can I tell you, daylight came when he came out the tomb. And if, if God can handle the dark times, so can you. If he got up, you can get up. Because he lives, you can live. God bless y'all tonight. I'm done bothering y'all now. We'll, we'll pick this back up another day, another time. But, but I want you to share with somebody uh, that they can make it. I want you to share with somebody they can make it. We're dealing with a, with a tumultuous time. We're dealing with some crazy stuff. God bless y'all tonight. We're dealing, with, we're going through some stuff that we have not seen before, have not dealt with before. We ain't never been on punishment this long. We ain't never had stay in the house this long. Matter of fact, outside ain't never been on punishment. Can I tell you, we can make it through it though. We, we're going to get through it. As long as we hold fast to the promises of God. God says it in Matthew. He says, Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I need y'all to catch that. You might be going through it, but you're not going through it by yourself. Rely on him who can help you get through it. I hope this blessed y'all tonight. I, I hope it ministered to you all tonight. I, I, I'm really praying because I, I don't know why the Lord won't let me turn this thing off because I done tried to hit the button three times. It's somebody who is dealing with darkness right now and don't know how they're going to make it. I, I'm praying y'all catching this. It's somebody dealing with it, somebody going through it, it's somebody wondering what's next. They're wondering how they're going to get through. Let me, let me tell you this. I've, I've been through it. Man, I've, 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 I've been through some time, some days and some times where I promise you nobody but God brought me through it. I've been through some dark times. I, I've, I've been through some suicidal thought times. I've, I've been through some end it all moments. I've, I've been through some why me Lord moments. I've been through days and times where it seemed like regardless of how wide my eyes were open, I could not see anything in front of me. I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I was going to go forward. I thought I was at the end of my rope, at the end of my journey. But God, Lord have mercy. I, I'm, I'm praying y'all catching this tonight because somebody right now needs to have a but God moment. Somebody, some, somebody is dealing with it. Can I, can I tell you? That, that another man ain't the solution, another woman ain't the solution, the pill bottle ain't the solution, the loaded gun is not the solution, trying to slit your wrist ain't going to fix it, you can crash that car, get crippled and still have to live through it. You, stop trying to be God and learn to rely on God. I'm telling you, somebody needs a but God moment. You're going through it right now, the money ain't as long as the bills, but God. I don't know what's wrong with my spouse, Lord, but God. My kids done lost their mind, but God. It's dark in my life, but God. Don't believe DT ain't cutting nobody off, but God. Don't believe they won't come get that car, but God. Somebody needs to know that this is not it. You have to get to a point to where you start breaking, breaking down. Stop breaking down and start pushing toward the break. Through. You're stronger than you think. You're smarter than you think. You're wiser than you think. But it's all about but God. Let me tell you something. It's somebody that's watching right now that laid down last night and prayed that the Lord would just let it end in their sleep. You woke up today still trying to figure out why you're here but God. He decided it wasn't time yet. He decided you needed to fix this and he's giving you an opportunity to fix it. He's here to help you fix it. You just have to rely on it. You have to rely on him. You have, you have to trust uh, in him. Watch God do what he promised us he would. 
he would do. I got to let y'all go. I got to let y'all go. I, my prayer, my prayer tonight, we, we've, we've prayed um, continuously for, for all of our first responders, our doctors and nurses and staff. We've, we've prayed for EMS workers. We pray uh, for those who are working in our stores. We, we've prayed for all essential employees. We've, we've prayed for all of those people. And, and we continue to. But tonight, I, I want you to pray for, for, for us. Matter, matter of fact, let's make it specific tonight. Tonight, let's pray for you. I don't know who the you is. But for the you who needs this prayer, we want to pray for you. For, for, for the you who, who, who's stuck in the middle of breakdown, but you're praying for breakthrough, we're praying for you. For you who don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, tonight we're praying for you. For, 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 that, for that individual who done packed up all the stuff in the house and, and can't decide whether to leave or not, we're praying for you. For, for, for the one who's trying to decide what to do next, we're praying, we're praying for you. My prayer is this, and, and, and it's simple. My prayer is that whatever you need God to be, that's what he is tonight. That's my prayer. I know that probably sounds real vague, but but all of us need something different from God. And all of us are on the verge of our breakdown in our own particular ways. And my prayer is tonight that whatever we need God to be is what he is. That's that's what I'm praying for you tonight. That's that's what I'm praying tonight, because. Because we, 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 you know, we make this mistake, say, oh, God, go, go, go see about this person. Go see about that person. When was the last time you literally just said, but God, tonight I need you. Tonight, my house needs you. Tonight, you know, my family needs you. But tonight, God, my church needs you. Tonight, my pastor needs you. When was the last time you got personal with God and, and then seriously you know, got sincere with God. When was the last time you told God, I can't stop drinking? When was the last time you told God, I tried to stop cheating, but I just can't? When was the last time you told God, I can't stop, you know, smoking? I, you know, I'm addicted to this gambling thing. When was the last time you were so honest with God that, that you knew you were at the end? And, and, and if you didn't talk to God at that moment, you were never going to make through, you were never going to make it through what you were in. When was the last time you had that moment? Now's the time. So my, my, my challenge tonight is, is for you to begin to pray to God about what you're going through. Stop, stop being vague with God. Stop saying, God, I need you to make a way. What do you need a way made with? Stop telling God, I don't feel good. Tell God the truth. God, everything hurt. Stop, stop telling God, Lord, I wish he would act right. Just say, God, send him home or send him away. Stop, stop, stop being vague with God. God, I don't know what's wrong with these kids. Tell them, God, I messed up raising them and now I need you to help me put them back together. Be honest with God. Be sincere with God. And then watch God move on your behalf. So we're we going to pray. We're we going to get out of here. We're going to pray. We, 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 we've, we've hit our mark tonight. We, we've done what God said to do. And so we, we're going to pray. Uh, and, and, and even when this is over, I want you to keep praying tonight. Uh, that God moves and uh, that he does what he promised us uh, he would do. God bless you all tuning in. I certainly uh, bless God for seeing you each and every week. You all have been a blessing to me more than you know. Uh, it's good to, to be able to fellowship with you. We've been working on setting up some things that will allow us to operate through Zoom and, and meetings and, uh, you know, and all of this stuff. And uh, I'm telling you, every time I go to set it up, something happened on a Tuesday early. And so we're going to set it up. When I get it set up, I send you all information you all can call in and we'll do this via video and, and I can see you and we can really dialogue this thing. So we're going to get it done. We're working on it. I'm praying this, this message blessed you. I'm certainly praying it's been a blessing to me. I'm praying that it's been a blessing to you. Don't stop at the breakdown. Push through the breakthrough. Remember it, your shelter, your system, and your savior. Let's pray tonight. God, again, we certainly thank you. Uh, God, for being so good to us. We thank you. Uh, for being so awesome to us, God. We we thank you for this day because we really didn't deserve it. We've been so messed up and so consumed with ourselves that, God, we didn't even acknowledge how good you've been. And so we come now asking for your forgiveness uh, for for our mindset, our acts and actions. And God, we, we need you now to look and have mercy upon us. And God, we ask now for all of those who are watching, who tuned in. Uh, God, we ask special prayers uh, 
because God, there's some people that are struggling right now. Uh, they're struggling in their jobs and their marriages. They're struggling with their family structure. God, they may be struggling with their church home. They may be struggling with their pastor. And so God, we ask tonight that you would be God in our lives. And, and God, we ask for your mercy tonight upon all of us. Uh, God, you, we, we don't have to send you nowhere because you're everywhere. And so we ask that you would just make your presence known in our lives tonight. We ask that God tonight in the midst of the midnight hour, uh, before the dawning of a new day, that God, you would move in and God, you would have your way in our lives, that you would move in and that you would cause miracles to happen, that you would move in and God, whatever changes that need to be made, you change them, God, that you would move in. Whatever doors need to be opened, you would open them and God, whatever doors need to be closed, you would close them. We ask God that you would move in our lives so that we may truly see you and hear you and feel your presence in our lives. God, uh, you know what we're going through. You, 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 you know the circumstances and the situation. And so God, with all of these folk that we have lost already, all of those who are still sick, God, we, we ask uh, for your divine presence and finger of love in their lives. Bless now grieving families, God. Bless those who are uh, uh, awaiting phone calls of recovery, God. Bless those who have been making funeral arrangements uh, for those who they have lost, God. Bless now the churches uh, and every pastor and leadership who is standing, and God, attempting to declare your word, and God, uh, uh, trying to make sense of decisions made by leadership that we need to make more so leaning on your leadership, Bless now our members, God. Bless our families and, and friends as only you can. God, bless this time we've had together. We ask that you allow us another chance to do it again. We thank you for what you've already done. We bless your name for right now. We certainly look forward to what you're going to do. It's in your mighty and majestic name we pray, telling you thank you in advance. Amen. God bless you all tonight. God bless you all tonight. Uh, share this, uh, share this message with your, share this with your, your friends and your family. We pray that this touches, uh, those who need to hear it, whoever needs to hear it, we pray is touching them right now. And so we want you to share it, uh, with, with your people. I'm praying for you all. I'm praying for you all. Thank you so much for your prayers. I see your comments. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your continued support. Uh, of, of this great ministry. God has, has given us some great people uh, to lead. And so we're certainly grateful uh, for all that God has been doing in our church. And uh, we, we're doing some, some small things, some little things to, uh, to, to encourage our people and even to uh, bless our building so that when we're able to go back in, it'll be better than the way we remember it. And so you all keep us in prayer. I'm praying for you all. I'm praying for your churches, praying for your families, for your pastors. And uh, most of all, I'm praying for you all tonight. I, I want you all to sincerely pray uh, that God does move uh, on your behalf tonight. All right. You all take it easy. I love you. God bless you all. Uh, until the next time we meet again, you all be blessed. Bye-bye.